For a diplomat serving abroad, their shield against prosecution isn't a team of top-tier lawyers. It's two words, diplomatic immunity. Many may wonder how this two-word phrase enables diplomats to steer clear from prosecution, even in cases where ordinary citizens may face severe consequences. This blog post will shed light on the complexities and intricacies of diplomatic immunity, from its origins to its practical implications in the modern world. The concept of diplomatic immunity is rooted in ancient civilizations. Back then, messengers who carried critical messages across kingdoms were protected by divine decree, as harming them was considered a grave offense against the gods. This same principle evolved over the centuries, eventually crystallizing into the diplomatic immunity we know today. In the modern era, the 1961 Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations codified the rules of diplomatic immunity. This treaty, ratified by over 190 states, safeguards diplomats from potential coercion or harassment by host countries and enables them to perform their duties effectively. At its core, diplomatic immunity is a legal doctrine that ensures diplomats cannot be prosecuted or arrested under the jurisdiction of host states. Its coverage ranges from criminal offenses to civil and administrative jurisdictions. It's essential to note that this does not mean diplomats are above the law. They are still expected to respect and follow the laws of the host state. However, if they fail to do so, they cannot be prosecuted by the host state's legal system. The immunity extends beyond the diplomat themselves. Their family members, staff, and even their property, such as embassy buildings, also enjoy this protection. So in practical terms, local police are not allowed to enter diplomatic premises without permission, nor can they arrest or detain diplomats, regardless of the accusation. While diplomatic immunity seems attractive for its seemingly absolute protection, it's not a blank check for unlawful conduct. The sending state can waive this immunity in severe cases. This step allows the host state to prosecute the diplomat, albeit only with the sending country's consent. Moreover, if a diplomat misbehaves or breaches laws to a significant extent, the host state can declare them persona non grata, this Latin term translates to an unwelcome person. Being declared persona non grata essentially means the diplomat's tenure in the host state ends immediately and they are expected to leave. However, in multilateral appointments, like in the United Nations or European Union, declaring a diplomat persona non grata is not an option due to the collective nature of these organizations. Despite this, diplomats in such assignments are still expected to adhere to acceptable standards of conduct, and serious breaches could result in severe repercussions, including being recalled by their sending state. Diplomatic immunity is not designed to encourage reckless behavior. Instead, it's a tool to ensure diplomatic relations between states can progress without undue interference. It guarantees that diplomats can execute their duties without fear of prosecution based on false charges, cultural misunderstandings, or political pressure. Diplomatic immunity is an integral part of international diplomacy, but it is not a license for unlimited freedoms. It's a balance of rights and responsibilities that ultimately serves the cause of peace, dialogue, and international cooperation. While the idea of being untouchable might seem attractive at first glance, the reality is much more complex. A diplomat's conduct should reflect the respect and dignity their position commands. At the end of the day, the privilege of diplomatic immunity brings with it a hefty responsibility to maintain the highest standards of conduct and integrity. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.